Hello nurses, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. Today's focus is going to be afterload versus preload, a general overview of these two concepts. I go a little bit more depth into my other videos about afterload and preload, but I'm just going to cover hemodynamics, what they are, what you need to know, and why it's important. And it's from my, these nurses notes that you can find on um, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and um, also on nursingcamp.com on afterload and preload. Okay, let's get started. All right, so the first thing about preload and afterload. Preload is uh, be the load before the heart. So it's before the heart. So it's the volume going into the heart. And that is the preload. Okay. And afterload is the pressure after the heart, so the vasculature, the fingers and toes. So the concept, this is all a concept, and the concept is based on understanding hemodynamics. So NCLEX questions may focus on uh, preload medications that affect preload or afterload medications, but more importantly, um, what's what are those medications? So I generally will think about when I'm thinking about preload meds, you think about like uh, beta blockers affect the fluid going in during diastolic. diastolic. Next is uh, Lasix, affects preload, also afterload, but more preload. Then, um, what else? Uh, nitro, affects preload, morphine affects preload. It's all the volume that's going to affect this fluid going into the heart. And so it decreases the workload of the heart. Okay, so some normal hemodynamics is we have a normal hemodynamics of ejection fraction is 60%. And we need that greater. If, there, if it's less than 60%, there's decreased cardiac output. Now, cardiac output, I like to think of CO. So I add an O there, that gives me 8 and half of eight equals four. So that's my cardiac output. And cardiac output's normally this, but if there's a low output volume, then it's gonna be less than four. C, the volume peripherally, CVP, is the fingers and toes. What's the, what's the fluid like out there? And this is four to eight, this is four to eight. So eight is too much fluid, and four is not enough fluid. So then I take my wedge pressures, P-A-W-P, I, I add these two together, and I have 12, and I bring this eight over here. And my wedge pressure is on the left atrium, going out towards the lungs. Um, and that's also fluid, and less than eight is dry, and 12 is too much. So it's very important to understand hemodynamics, because hemodynamics are all about fluid. So if you know what the fluid is, so if, if you know this is dry, that's going to be a decreased preload. Okay. Now, <clears throat> high, conversely, will be an increased preload. Okay, so that's volume. So those are our hemodynamics, and that's based on main things that we look at. Another one we look at is perfusion. This is why NCLEX likes this st stuff, because there's a lot of assessment in here. A pu perfusion is the DDS, okay, like dentist 3, right? And that's diastolic times 2 plus systolic divided by 3. And that needs to be greater than 60 to 65. If it is not, you're going to have a decreased urinary output. Less than 30 cc's in an hour or less than 400 in 24 hours. That's a cue. But first, the interesting thing about mean arterial pressure is you're going to have, um, it needs to be 70 to 75 to uh, perfuse the brain. And if it's not, we have decreased level of consciousness, and that's acute, and that's problematic. So um, that's why mean arterial pressure is very important. Okay, what else? Um, 
blood pressures, and heart rate. Okay, so heart rate is always going to be high, okay, because it's going to be reacting to the problems that are going on. Um, and systemic vascular resistance, that's the last one, SVR. SVR indicates the fingers and toes, think of peripheral vascular, SVR. I always turn this V sideways, so I get a 7, so it kind of gets me to where I need to be, 7, and that's 1,600, 7 to 1,600. This is really squeezed, or vasoconstriction, and then this is not. This is dilated, okay? All right, so understanding those hemodynamics can really make you understand afterload and preload. Um, so... Like we talked about, things that meds that affect it are the same things that we use to treat it. So when there's a increase of an afterload, like they're really, really uh, vasodilated, we're going to vasoconstrict them with um, alpha medications, alpha A. And I flip that on it upside down, that's vasopressors. Okay. And the reason we give vasopressors is we need to squeeze this volume. Also, uh, we might give, um, if their problem is it's too tight and there's too much pressure, like in this, um, afterload, increased afterload, that means peripheral vascular disease. There's a problem out here. The vessels are tight. The heart is working too hard, and it's crapping out. Well, that's not my nursing term, but you know what I mean. And what happens is, is that we need to soften these vessels up. And the way that we do that is with... Um, Calcium channel blockers, um, like in Lodipine, in Lodipine. And see my uh, calcium channel blockers lecture where I cover um, CA blockers and um, peripheral vascular. Also, um, we're going to vasodilate in an increase it afterload. Um, so nitroprusside might be given. So overall, you know, when you're looking at... Um, preload, afterload, if you hang into the hemodynamics, um, cardiac output, CVP, PAWP, um, heart rate, um, ejection fraction, mean arterial pressure, um, and uh, SVR, these are, and urine output is just the out result. If these are affected, urine outputs can be affected. If these are affected, uh, mentation will be affected so it's an important concept to understand and, and once you understand the volume and it's all about volume and pressure then you really start to get to the the core of what this concept truly is and then you start to nurse and and really start to pay attention to these parameters and your vital signs uh, start to mean a totally different lot uh, thing well that's my general overview of uh, afterload and preload and hemo dynamics. Um, my name is Camp and I'm from nursingcamp.com where I'm covering all the NCLEX and cardiac uh, this month and you see my other lectures on medications and uh, more advanced lectures on the preload and afterload. That's it for me. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest and Etsy or nursingcamp.com and say hello and nurse on.